Hi, everyone. My name is Sergio Palomeque Mangut. I work as a researcher in the research group on perception and intelligence systems at the University of Extremadura. And today I'm honored to present our air quality monitoring platform based on low cost metal oxide sensors. Now, scientific literature has been consistent for the past decades. So in the dangers behind exposure to ambient air pollution, both in indoor and outdoor environments. For that reason, policymakers and environmental agencies have a strong need for measuring the concentration of pollutants in defined areas so that they can take preemptive countermeasures and inform the public on certain precautions. We have developed a sensing platform, especially intended to be used by citizens in outdoor environments. The device allows them to see real-time information about air pollution in their phone, while also providing data to a network that maps air quality in a large area. In the next few minutes, I will provide some facts about the risks of air pollution and address some key details regarding the sensing platform that we have created and how it was tested and deployed in the field in a campaign at the city of Barcelona. An article published in The Lancet in 2017 determined that long-term exposure to ambient fine particles caused 4.2 million deaths in just one year. Subsequent studies have shown this number of casualties to be even larger and persist in considering air pollution one of the top leading risk factors for mortality globally. As for the actions that institutions can take against it, it's important to consider that air quality monitoring equipments are expensive and bulky, factors that limit the number of locations that can be measured. For this same reason, low-cost sensing technologies such as MOS sensors have been gathering a great deal of attention. Metal oxide semiconductor gas sensors are miniaturized, low-powered and low-cost components highly sensitive to oxidizing and reducing gases. This property is achieved with a metal oxide nanostructure containing a doping agent in contact with a hot plate. When powered, the structure is heated and an electron depletion layer is formed due to oxygen bonding near the semiconductor surface and attracting free electrons. In this state, the depletion layer is sensitive to oxidizing and reducing gases in the atmosphere. And even though most sensors have obstacles in their use as air quality monitors, mainly cross sensitivity and humidity influence, these are an appealing choice for detecting ozone and nitrogen dioxide. Usually, digital metal oxide sensors use I2C and SPI, digital communications. Also, these devices tend to integrate algorithms to process their own data and output analytes detections. In order to detect particulate matter, we will be using a sensor based on light scattering, which usually consists of a microphone for drawing the air particles in, a laser diode and a photodiode. An estimation of particulate matter mass concentration is output by calculating and counting particle sizes. These type of devices have an affordable cost that allow them to be deployed in large networks and are considered to be well suited for monitoring short-lived pollution events. The platform we created is comprised of a custom designed PCB, a 3.7 lithium ion battery, a PM sensor, and a smartphone device that sends the taken samples to a cloud. Basically, this device can function as a sensor node inside a wireless sensor network, allowing to process data from the cloud in order to map urban environments. This system is based on a 32-bit PIC32 microcontroller unit from Microchip and embeds a Bluetooth low energy module, five MOS gas sensors, and a power stage for recharging the battery through a micro USB port. This power block is essential to provide the voltage level required 
by all the integrated circuits. We also develop a smartphone app, as seen in the image, that activates Bluetooth connections with the device, starts and stop measures, shows the air quality of the surrounding environment, and sends the sensors data to a cloud. The app has been implemented with a cross-platform approach using Flutter. In the image, we can take a glimpse at the device inside its case, which we designed so that it could be wear on a belt, and its simple control with an on and off power switch. One of our main goals when designing it was to create a platform that was easy to use for anyone. Although not visible from this angle, the lateral sides of the case have an inlet and an outlet section for letting the air flow. The advantage of using a PM sensor inside the case is that we could use its integrated fan to draw the air particles over the MOS sensors embedded in the board. In our, in our tests, the device achieved around seven hours of battery life. Before deploying it in the field, we tested the device in a simple experiment with calibrated concentrations of ozone and nitrogen dioxide. Using a hermetic box with an inlet and an outlet tube, we controlled the surrounding air of the device to test the response of the MOS sensors. These two pollutants, especially ozone, are considerably relevant in outdoor air quality monitoring. I will later explain the sequence of concentrations followed in the experiment. In this radar chart, we can see the normalized response of the raw measure from the sensor array during the experiment. The fingerprint response for each pollutant demonstrates a good ability for the device to discriminate between ozone and nitrogen dioxide at different concentration, concentrations, generating a differentiated fingerprint for each which can then be potentially used to train a neural network. Furthermore, the performance of the Zeta Mod 4410 was especially keen to us. This is the response of two signals from the Zeta Mod 4410 during the same experiment. Let's first take a look at the sequence of steps the experiment was made of. In this first gray reference line, the box was open was closed, sorry, and the calibration instrument turned on, providing clean air to the atmosphere. The blue steps are the pollutant concentration. In this first case, was ozone at 50 parts per billion, 120 parts per billion, and 240 parts per billion. The raw resistant signal in red dropped accordingly, whereas the air quality index value in green increased. This signal is calculated by the sensor itself through the manufacturer's provided firmware. After having the box open during a few minutes for renewing, for renewing the air and for heat evacuation, the same step process was repeated for nitrogen dioxide. In this case, at 50, 110 and 220 parts per billion. Both signals serve a similar response to the increase of nitrogen dioxide concentration. With these results, we have verified the device's response to, the, to two major outdoor air pollutants. For field testing, we deployed the platform at Barcelona in a campaign, in a campaign organized in collaboration with the city council. Eight volunteers carried these devices in three different municipalities near Barcelona over three weeks in each. The image shows the results of the campaign, with each point representing a sample of PN 2.5 at certain time instants. Different symbols correspond to different devices, and the color scheme follows the guidelines of the Spanish government regarding the allowed concentration of pollutants. A closer look at the samples taken in San Adrià del Besos can be seen in this image. These are the air quality index values taken by the Zeta Mod 4410 with the color scheme provided by the manufacturer. Volunteers were asked to walk by the reference stations located in the cities so that we can apply processing techniques to the resulting data. In this regard, 
our research group is currently working on analyzing all the gathered measures and applying calibration techniques to them. Summarizing, we have effectively designed and developed a sensing platform that both provides with real-time information to the user and fits a wireless sensor network in urban areas. We have created a solution to the required space and time resolution hardware quality data to effectively map urban environments, enhancing the institution's ability to assess population on exposure to hazardous air quality. Researchers, policymakers, and environmental agencies would immensely benefit from having such a network with accurate sensors. Further research will be dedicated to evaluate the collected data from the most sensors and infer processing techniques and calibration techniques considering the reference stations. Thank you so much for your time and attention. And if you are interested in our work and want to know more details about it, do not hesitate to contact me at any time. Thank you again and have a nice day.